Welcome back to the Studio News Crew, better known as BS News Crew. Back to our topic on gay marriage. Remind us again of your views, Connor. I strongly believe that marriage should be between two people that love each other. That being said, I am for the right of same-sex couples to marry. Our Constitution clearly states in the 14th Amendment that all citizens have equal right under protection of the law. This is true, however, I am still against gay marriage. According to monotheism and Judeo-Christian beliefs, God created man to be with a woman and considers lying with a man lying with another man to be a sin. Considering our forefathers were Christian and we are a predominantly Christian nation, I am in fact against same-sex marriage. I understand your thought, but John Locke's theory on equality of same-sex couples derives from the Bible. He states that the Christian God did not establish government for humans, and impressed the idea that humans have original sin and need government in order to control it. In his theory, God intended for humans to negotiate po their political problems so that they may achieve life, liberty, and property. Why would any rational lesbian or gay man consent to a government that has power to discriminate against them based on their sexual orientation? Okay, okay. I, I see your point, but we're almost out of time for this topic. So, why don't we take a quick call from one of our viewers? Hello, sir. Can you tell us your thoughts on same-sex marriage? Yes, hello. I personally think we should take the same approach as the Athenian democracy. They did not view sexual orientation as a social identifier, or even difference for that matter. They more took the view of sexual roles as long as one person had the masculine role and one had the feminine role. So I personally see same-sex marriage to be no problem at all. Thank you, caller. That's all the time we have on this topic here at Blue Studios Newsroom. Our next topic is the death penalty. Reese. I see the death penalty as a positive thing, as it relates to Hammurabi's code. As the famous saying goes, it's an eye for an eye, and many penalties included death. Law 130 states, If a man violate the wife, betrothed, or child wife of another man who has never known a man, and still lives in her father's house, and sleep with her and be surprised, this man shall be put to death, but the wife is still blameless. Nowadays we are more lenient with the death penalty, however it is still necessary. Alright, but since the time the Hammurabi Code was written, some might say that man has gotten even more brutal, which can be a valid argument based on the many wars and tremendous accounts of death that follow them. Americans seem to be restricted to less killing, which is why I stand behind the Eighth Amendment. No cruel or unusual punishment. Without some kind of limit, humans may resort back to a primitive nature in murdering without proper reasoning, as Aristotle might say. Maybe, but the death penalty has been used throughout history. S something that was not effective would have not been used for this long. And once again, I say, is it truly humane? Many would argue, according to the Eighth Amendment, that there should be no cruel or unusual punishment. Is death not cruel? And caging them for life in a cell isn't cruel? Less cruel than death. I'm not so sure. The Enlightenment thinker Thomas Hobbes would agree with me. He believes that people are naturally evil and cruel themselves. It, it would be more dangerous for the rest of the public to let the cruelest of them still survive. There is a possibility of escaping jail, but you can't escape death. Maybe. Let's see what's going on with our... Other Connor reporting from outside the doors of the prison where a protest has begun to form. Yes, I am here at the beginnings of a large protest due to the fact that a man in request for his last meal of a lobster dinner. A fine choice, but a deadly effects on a prisoner and further review of his medical record was deadly allergic to shellfish. This crowd of angry people are now protesting because this man would rather take his own life than have the government have the ability to take it from him and what some are calling a heroic act, and others an idiotic path to a painful death. Now I'm here to interview one of the protesters to see what his view is. Hello sir, what would you like to share? Yeah, I'd like to share. I looked deeper into this and found this man said, as his last words, you can't take what's not yours. And you know what? He is right. John Locke st started the natural rights of life, liberty, and property. Then we mimic that in our declaration. The unalienable rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. The government cannot take life away from us. You heard him, guys. Looks like that's a strong point. I'll send it back to you guys before it gets out of hand. Let's talk about a hot topic recently. Should marriage or want to be legalized? Let's see what our previous caller has to say about this. Hello, who is this? Yes, hello. We were wondering about what, what you thought about the topic of marijuana, and should it be legalized? Well, I believe all this goes back to the Ninth Amendment that states, the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or discharge others retained by the people. So should someone be able to have their, the choice if they want to be involved with marijuana, whether society likes it or not? I believe so, but what's your take on it? I think this should be handled by voting upon the, by the people for participation of commoners, the direct democracy, and that people are capable of making their own decisions of themselves. That's a good point. Thank you. You're a very well-informed caller. Goodbye. Alright, and do you have any other views on this?
Well, I believe in what John Locke says, which is all mankind being all equal and independent. No one ought to harm another in, in life, health, liberty, and, or possessions. So I think it is a person's right to have marijuana if that is what they choose. I agree with you, Connor. Thank you. Now onto the big one, gun control. I'm personally against gun control. The Second Amendment states that we have the right to bear arms. I'm on the other side. I am for gun control. Like Thomas Hobbes would say, people are naturally evil and will abuse the power to own a gun. Yes, this is true. But as stated in the Declaration of the Rights of Man, since property is an inviolable and sacred right, no one shall be deprived. My gun is my property, and the government will not take it away from me. Now on to our absolutely fabulous reporter, Connor. One. Thanks, Connor. I'm here now at the Aurora shooting. This shooting occurred at the movie theater and killed 12 people and wounded 58. Let's talk now to an innocent bystander. Hello there, sir. What are your thoughts on how this will affect the gun control laws in the United States? Well, I personally see that this will bring down more laws on gun control, which is the least thing this country needs. According to our own Declaration of Independence, we have unalienable rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. If I own a gun, it's my property, and I pursue happiness at the range with my guns. That's my right. That is all of our rights, and we should not let one person committing a shooting take that away from us. He's got a point here, guys. All right, now back to you. Thanks, Connor. That wraps up our show for tonight. Tune in next week where we'll cover all new debates and topics. Before you go, check out this ad from our sponsor. Hey, you. You look hungry. You know what you should eat? Freedomos! The Declaration of Independence states you have the right to own property. If you buy this cereal, it is your property. Why are you gonna buy this cereal? Freedom! To receive your freedom owes! It's only four simple payments of $19.99. Call now at 1-800-955-555555. Freedom!